we wanted to beat a southerly front that was coming through. Unfortunately, the front has beaten us. I hope this pass goes well. Our first proper atoll pass in Avalon. Welcome to the story of three sailors taking the long way home to Australia on a 38-foot boat called Finding Avalon. Last Sunday you saw us make landfall after 26 days on the Pacific Ocean. We've got a new bandage. Look at this one. Doesn't smell. We explored the island of Nukuhiva with friends. days at sea. We set the sails and headed from the Marquesas Islands to the Tuamotus, an archipelago of atolls in French Polynesia. How she's everything I know. She's a river to my flow. It's 8.30 in the morning, uh, we are at the North Pass of Fakarava. We're about two and a half miles out from the pass itself. Uh, we're about six hours ahead of schedule. We were aiming for the two o'clock tide, but we've had some favorable winds. And we've also been motor sailing pretty damn hard to get here because we wanted to beat a southerly front that was coming through. Unfortunately, the front has beaten us and got here about 4 a.m. this morning. Uh, so anyway, we're going to do our best to get through the pass. We're probably about half an hour later than I would have liked to have been, but it's not always a perfect world. So we'll give it our best go about getting through the pass. Um, we're probably about yeah, 40 minutes, half an hour I'd say, past slack. Um, because we're going to be going against the wind, against the wind swell, and against a bit of current. The current plan is actually to put a second reef in the main. Current plan. <laughs> so, why is that funny? Sorry, the current plan. Don't worry. Carry on. Uh, so we're going to run with a second reef in the main, just to give us a little bit of extra grump. We'll fill up the jib, uh, and hopefully on this angle we'll be able to get into the middle of the channel, tack, and then get around the little bombies there and into the channel and up to the anchorage. But yeah, it's been a pretty good five days of sailing. All in all, it's been pretty good sailing conditions. Uh, the, last, the last day and a bit has just been motor sailing, which always feels fast, but you always got it that you're burning diesel and you didn't want to burn. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's enjoy Fakarava. I hope this pass goes well. Our first proper atoll pass in Avalon. An atoll is basically the remnants of a volcano crater after millions of years of erosion. Often there will be a cut in the land which will allow an access point into the lagoon. We call this a pass. The North Pass is a lot wider than the South, so we figured we would pick that one whilst we still have our training wheels on. And the anchorage is right by the island's biggest settlement, Rotoava. The passes are notoriously tricky, as the currents ripping through them can be rather fierce, and if you time it wrongly so the current and wind oppose each other, there can be huge standing waves. The currents will usually be weakest on a slack tide, so that's the time to be making your passage through. To keep momentum against the opposing current, we motor sailed through the pass and tacked up wind.
Our mates Adrian and Kate on SV Loki were already in Anchorage and warned us about the coral bombings that peppered the seabed. Where'd you go? Huh? So you got to like there and just turned around. She's such a pussoir. Um, the anchor is like clenching onto a piece of coral. Yeah. Um, and it is right like we could have dropped it five meters to the left, and there was this giant bombing. It was good to be tucked away in the anchorage in time for the worst of the weather. I seldom gaze at the sunset, taking your beautiful color. Oh man, it is so beautiful this morning. We're just heading into town now. Because we're going to uh, go for an explore on land today. But the water here is so clear. And you have to weave the zinghy in through all these bombies and live coral. Yeah, right as you. The bombie right there. You're about to drive into. <laughs> um, to get in here to the beach. And the water is so clear today. It's just absolutely beautiful. Beautiful morning to be had. on their way because we have a stupid poo that can never be on time <laughs> so now we're just gonna guess where we have to go even Alexa left us The two emojis are famous for producing black pearls. Today we're off on a visit to a pearl farm, along with friends Pierre and Marie from French boat Papillon, Laura and Martin from Aussie boat Three Sheets, and Kate and Adrian, also Aussie boat Loki. And the rays be down on me. Rays beating down. Tiny pieces of coral, little tiny shells, and mother of pearl. Black pearls are formed by the Tahitian black lipped oyster. When a foreign body, such as a grain of sand, gets stuck in an oyster's body, a pearl begins to form. Oh, and we have the maiden spirit. You can get that in the 
How do they do it, Adrian? <laughs> <laughs> you sounded all schooled on it. Oysters are cultured in these plastic nets to protect them from predators. The amount of time the oyster is cultured generally correlates to the quality of the pearl. You're looking at least two years for a high quality bead. They are harvested and passed along to the grafter. The grafter extracts the pearl from the oyster and replaces it with a nucleus, which is a bead of a similar size which will form the base for the new pearl. The oysters are then resituated and the culturing process starts once more. The usual working lifespan of an oyster is generally about eight years. Tell them, tell them to put the oyster in the Usually you, you, you only have four cycles. Okay. But that's why I explained to her that after four cycles, four cycles makes six years, plus two years to get, to get a oyster. A younger oyster will have two years at least, two or three years. So plus six, we are eight, nine, and then we don't kill them. We, we put it, if the pearl is reasonably good, we continue, but we're not to make a pearl, but to make a cashew. And that takes another six, eight years. So we are at 16 years and she's still living. So she must go to 25 or 30 years in, 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 in the lagoon. Yep. Um, I'm actually shopping for Christmas presents right now, Jackson, so this is a secret operation. Get away from me. Are you being naughty in the pearl shop? Yeah, I am actually. <laughs> we were never going to buy anything, but it's very pretty. Just picking up a few things for the ladies in my life. Look, you can just make your own. Oh yeah, you can. That's all you need. There you go. Then you... Why don't you just buy the teardrop one? That's where you got it. You buy the necklace for it. Yeah. Mum would just wouldn't wear that though. Like, mm. Oh, that's really pretty. Yeah, she wouldn't go for that. What have you got so far? I can't show oh. you because it's Christmas. <laughs> Good, buying Christmas presents in July. I can show you this one. So it's Mum's birthday tomorrow, and um, she's having this. Mm. This is good because now we're just on the rice and fish diet. <laughs> so we have this no money for anything else. Happy birthday, Mum. Love you. This is your birthday present. But I hope those sales work because we've got no money for diesel. <laughs> and at least you don't have to cook anymore because we don't have any money for gas. We are beautiful. <laughs> oh, well. It's empty and they're spending all our money. Tonga? We're gonna have to eat rice now. We're gonna have to eat rice and coconuts. Sadly, it's in those 20 more money on pearls. What do you think? Think it's a good idea? Me too. You think it's a good idea? I'm cool with it. Yeah. What do you think? Conveniently, on the way back into town, we found a bloody good food truck. How's everyone's giant sandwiches? Yeah, it's ginormous. I could have guessed that the quaffle marge was on a friend. <laughs>
but I'm excited to um, be getting out of here and going and adventuring. Heading south tomorrow? Yeah, heading south. Really hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Good news. Second chance at grabbing yourself some Finding Avalon merch. For free. For free with this week's competition. This week's question is, have you found your Avalon? After just starting to explore French Polynesia, I think we're getting pretty close to Finding Avalon. Oh, yeah. It's pretty amazing here. It is absolute paradise, and we're loving every minute. But we want to know, where is your Avalon? It could be a person, a food, a place, somewhere you've sailed, somewhere you've taken your car, somewhere you surf. An activity, um, a situation. But just your paradise. That's what we want to know about. And all you've got to do is write the comment below in the comments box and the best comment will win themselves one of these. Or the other design. There are two designs of these. Mm. If you're not lucky enough to win one in the competition, then you can, of course, buy one. The link's in the description below. The campaign to buy these actually finishes on the 1st of September, so don't wait too long. All right, time to invite a patron on board. Two weeks ago, we had our patron-only live chat, and Dennis and Jody were lucky enough to become our first patrons to be invited on board, so we're super excited to have them on in the near future. Congratulations. And now it's time to draw a second patron to give them a chance too. Out of the magic hat. And the winner is... The suspense <laughs> is killing me. Eugene Trefeseven. Uh, sorry, Eugene, I hope you know who you are, and I'm really sorry for absolutely butchering your name. But congratulations, you've won a week on board Avalon, and we can't wait to hear from you. Just send us an email, and we'll sort everything out from there. Awesome. Can't wait to have you on board, and there are many more patron names to be drawn coming up. Yeah. So if you're interested in becoming a patron and supporting the journey and enjoying more of this content then yeah, consider becoming a patron. And if not, no worries. Just give this video a big fat like and subscribe if you're new. Oh, I wouldn't get too excited about heading south, Jackson. Join us next week as we run aground. never thought this would happen to us. Stop! <laughs> there's, there's eight sharks. Alright, coming in. And we visit the shark capital of the world. I know you've crossed the line You waited for a sign I won't be falling on my knees to beg you Break up, split up Life goes on, baby, let's catch up